Do you ever struggle with how unfair life sometimes seems to be? Because there are examples all around us, like the ruthless, money-hungry business person who cheated in business, cheated on his wife, and ignored his children while they were growing up, and then spent 20 years in lavish retirement traveling the world. Compare that with one of the most godly men I know, who served God and loved people his whole life, and in his retirement years, suffers the ravages of Parkinson's disease. So does that seem fair to you? Well, this week on Discover the Word, the Bible study group is going to turn to one of the Psalms, where the uh, psalm writer struggled with that. Psalm 73, a psalm about the unfairness of life. Pull up a chair and be part of the conversation on Discover the Word. Hi, and welcome to another week of studying the Bible together on Discover the Word. Discover the Word is the weekday small group Bible study from Our Daily Bread Ministries. And the three friends who join you at the table each day are ready to focus on Psalm 73 this week. Marty Hahn, Elisa Morgan, and Bill Crowder are spending some time over the next few weeks in the Old Testament book of Psalms and are finding help and perspective and encouragement in the poetry and lyrics of these songs because the Psalms so often contain the honest questions and the heartfelt struggles that we all run into in life. And so as I said, Psalm 73 and a song about the unfairness and inequity of life and the questions that raises about God is where we'll be this week. And getting to know the writer and something about his situation, why he was hesitant to even talk about his questions, will make for an interesting and I hope helpful week. So it looks like Mart and Elisa and Bill are ready to get started, and it's Bill who is leading this week, so he's going to lead off and get the conversation underway. Bill? A friend of Discover the Word, Philip Yancey, has written a book that I think is very, very important, and it deals with the issue of the question that won't go away. Mm-hmm. What's the question that he's talking about there? Why? 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 Oh, Why? Yeah. And the why question is really sometimes very personal and sometimes it's almost global Mm -hmm. in scope, isn't it? I mean, you think about victims of a tsunami and you say, why? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you think about events of genocide and you say, why? But sometimes it's much more personal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It could be the loss of a job. Mm. I mean, it could be loss of health. And it could be, why did I survive and someone else didn't. Yeah, survivor That's guilt. a huge one, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Some people are saying, why me? Mm-hmm. Others are saying, why not me? Right. Uh, and both can be equally burdensome. Some of our questions about why deal with suffering on a global scale, some on a personal scale. Some just have to do with injustice in the world. You just look at the things that happen in the world. A new town, Columbine, mm. a Virginia Tech, mm. Katrina, you know, we could just go yes, on and on yeah. and on. Every and, day in the news, you see it, right. right? And as I became older, I found myself struggling with the question of, why should I believe in a God who lets this kind of stuff happen mm-hmm. in the world? And that sounds like a blasphemous question on a Christian radio program, but it's a question that I think in our heart of hearts we go to. And it's a question that historically has been asked for a millennium. And that's what I want us to think about this week. I want us to wrestle with this question, but I want us to wrestle with it through the experience of someone in the Bible. And we're going to meet him today, and we're going to talk about his struggle and why he had it. And then the rest of the week, we're going to look at a song that he wrote out of his frustration as he looked at injustice in the world and wondered why. And the, the fellow we want to visit with this week is a man named Asaph. Uh, How do in you the spell Old that? A-S-A-P-H. We don't know a ton about him, but one of the things we do know about him that adds to the pressure of him wrestling with questions really about the character of God, in a sense. God's supposed to be just, but the world's unjust. How do I reconcile that? The thing that makes this kind of interesting, actually, is that Asaph was a worship leader in Israel. If somebody says, what does that mean in ancient Israel, a worship leader? Well, it means something that's not a whole lot different from what it means today in a church where someone stands up and leads in songs of worship. And a part of his response to this uh, worship was also writing songs. But he writes a very dark song. Hmm. Here's a worship leader whose job it is to stand up in front of the congregation and lead them 
and thinking great thoughts about a God that he's got questions about. And yet, when we're honest, you know, don't we all find ourselves in places of ministry beyond us? And we're still human and we still wrestle Mm -hmm. with various questions and painful situations in our Mm -hmm. lives. So I think we can probably relate to him more than... And I wonder whether or not this isn't just relating to people involved in what we call service Mm -hmm. to God. I would imagine that people, even in business or any place where there's a sense in which you've got other people depending on you, Mm -hmm. and it's like, I'm leading. Mm -hmm. Wherever we're serving God, right? Yeah, exactly. And there's always this question, okay, they're dependent upon me. They're following me, and I'm not sure where to go. I I don't have it all figured out. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're just trying like crazy to find the next step of the way, and you can't see it. And you can't admit to those following you that you don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. No, that's absolutely I mean, you've, right. You've got to you got to move forward as a leader. Or can you? Yeah. I think that's or a great you? question. And maybe Asaph shows us some of that. Well, I think Asaph shows us his struggles mm-hmm. with this issue of injustice, of questions about God, about life, about the brokenness of the world, about all the kinds of struggles that we're talking about. Asaph shows extraordinary transparency as he wrestles with these problems. Now, it would be helpful for us to maybe get a little context on the thinking of the ancient world, because there was a paradigm that Israel looked at these kind of things through. What do you mean by a paradigm? It's a a window, a point of reference, a perspective, kind of like a law by which they evaluated circumstances. And one way that uh, Old Testament scholars refer to this law is the law of retribution. Another way you could look at it, maybe in more familiar language, would be the law of fair returns. Mm. What the New Testament would call the law of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. So in Old Testament Israel, and we see this very clearly in the book of Job, where somebody is suffering and people are saying, well, that's because you sinned. Mm -hmm. If you were righteous, you'd be blessed. You're unrighteous, so you're judged. Right, right. Good stuff comes to the good. Bad stuff comes to the bad. Bad stuff goes to the bad. Mm -hmm. You must Mm -hmm. be bad. Mm Mm-hmm. And you get to this point with Job in particular, where he's hearing all this counsel. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not the person you're saying I am, and I'm suffering anyway. There's something wrong with this. This isn't working. We do that today sure. still. I mean, it's not just the Old Testament or even in the New Testament. We do it today mm-hmm. is that, well, you must have done something to deserve this kind of life. And for sure, there are consequences yeah. for our poor choices. And, and it, yeah, it's not that we think that we're right. perfect. We're not above that yeah, reality. I think everybody God's is, not going to blot that no, out. No, it's just that some things happen to some people that are out of proportion Mm -hmm. to the choices that they're making. That's right. And that's where the word injustice becomes so heavy on our hearts. It's just not fair. Right. How many times have we said that in our lives? Now, when we come to Asaph, he's talking out of that background where it just seems that this paradigm is broken. Now, what's interesting is in the book of Psalms, several Psalms speak to this law of fair returns, if we could call it that. In Psalm 34, David is the psalmist, and he's just saying, this is what it is. And so, Elisa, I'd like for you to look at Psalm 34, verses 15 and 16. This is how it works in the universe, okay? But when we come to Psalm 73, and that's where I'd kind of like you to go, Mart, is Psalm 73. This is the psalm we want to unpack together this week. Okay. And in Psalm 73, here you have this worship leader in Israel who says, I understand the theology. I understand the paradigm. It's not working. Hmm. And so I want us to hear the paradigm from Psalm 34. So, Elisa, if you would read Psalm 34, 15 to 16, and then Mart, if you would read Psalm 73, verses 12 and 13. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. And Bill, which? uh, 12 and 13. 12 and 13, okay. Behold, these are the wicked, and always at ease. They've increased in wealth. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and washed my hands in innocence, for I have been stricken all day long and chastened every morning. You have this idea. We all have this idea that good things ought to happen to good people and bad things ought to happen to bad people. And then we look at the world. And for the worship leader of Israel, where Asaph comes to is, how can I trust a God who claims to be just when the justice plan 
isn't working mm-hmm. at all. And I think what makes this hard is what you've pointed out. You got a chapter and verse, mm-hmm. you know, for the other side. That's right. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And that's what Job's friends, I mean, they didn't have chapter and verse, but man, they were hitting him with this, weren't they? Sure. They this were was just their, killing their him social with norm. This is the way it was interpreted. That's right. But, but we have chapter and verse of what they said. That's right. I mean, yes, we in, do. in chapter mm-hmm. four, it's like they're just saying it. Job, you know. Mm-hmm. And it's there's a part fault. of us that hears those words and we think, you know, that sounds right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sounds right. Well, again, we go back to the consequences. There are consequences mm-hmm. for some of our actions. And some of it's proportionality. I think some of you mentioned earlier, yeah. Mart, I think some of it's proportionality. Yeah, I made some bad choices, but this doesn't equal that. Mm-hmm. This seems out of proportion. Mm-hmm. This suffering seems out of proportion. Mart, in those words you read in Psalm 73, could you hear his pain? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, it's yes. just awful words. Mm-hmm. Would yeah. you re- read verses 12 and 13 again? It says, this is what the wicked are like, always free of care. They go on amassing wealth. Surely in vain I've kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. And then verse 14 as well. All day long I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishments. <laughs> oh. Yeah, how about every oh. morning there's new mercies? Here yeah. he says that every morning there's <laughs> yeah. punishment. And we think that new mercies ought to be our every morning experience. And he says, I'm getting pounded every single day. This is the why question, Mm -hmm. (laughs) really with skin on it, Mm -hmm. I think. And this is a question that we wrestle with every single day. And what I want us to do is step into Asaph's heartbreak this week and hear how he feels the question and then how he resolves the issue about whether or not he can trust his God in the middle of all of that confusion. Yeah, I think this is going to be a helpful week for us this week because uh, we'd like to believe that for the most part, life is going to be fair. But that's not always the case, is it? And so what do we do with that? Well, this is Discover the Word with Marty Hahn, Elisa Morgan, and Bill Crowder. And today we started a series in Psalm 73. It's a song that wrestles with the why question that we all ask when things just seem wrong to us. Our study in Psalm 73 with the group this week will prove a great help with this tension that we all face. Because, you know, in the 150 Psalms that we have in the Bible, I think there's a full spectrum of human experience and emotion in them. They're a biblical expression of the feelings that we all go through. All right, well, tomorrow on Discover the Word, Mart and Elisa and Bill will gather around the table again, and we'll dive back into Psalm 73 and talk about living life forwards, but most often only being able to understand it backwards. Be part of the group Tuesday on Discover the Word. See you then. Discover the Word is provided by Our Daily Bread Ministries.